This is the Cobb access port for the Porsche 981, both Cayman and Boxster. And this works with a 2.7 liter base engine, the 3.4 liter found in the S and GTS, and also the 3.8 liter found in the GT4 and Spider. You, every kit's gonna include an accessory pack that's going to give you your OBD2 uh, cord, um, a couple other things in there. You'll get your USB cord in here, uh, along with a uh, kind of a casing to hold the access port um, and the different faceplate color. You can use black or gray. Uh, quick start guide. This is a very easy to use uh, tuning solution. Nice thing is it has built in um, data logging and you can also look at that in real time. So. Let me pull out the access port here. Uh, a very nice unit, uh, small, nice little handheld. Um, you can mount this in your car. The nice thing is you can customize the gauges you want to see. So you could measure, you know, your air fuel ratio, timing. Uh, it also has a built-in performance uh, data recorder, so you could measure uh, zero to sixty quarter mile times. Uh, the best benefit of this, though, is it, it just plugs right in. Cobb offers off-the-shelf maps that will uh, tune the car and uh, you'll get about five to 10% extra horsepower just with the off the shelf maps. And then if you wanna do some uh, pro tuning, uh, you can take that even further. Obviously with more modifications, uh, they have different maps. So the stage one map, which is meant intended for a stock vehicle. Uh, and then a stage two that uh, typically with headers and an intake, um, you can even get more power. So the first step is going to be hooking up a battery tender. Uh, we recommend whenever you flash an ECU uh, that you hook up a battery tender. We have a specialized one to show you in just a second, but to access your battery on the 981, uh, there's two um, kind of in groove parts on this plastic. Um, you guys can put your fingers in and lift up, and then it'll pop right out. Just feel them here. It's hard plastic, don't want to scratch anything. Uh, just set this to the side. and your battery is right dead in center. All right, so the next step is just gonna be hooking up the uh, battery tender. Uh, we have Medtronic's uh, PSC 550. We rent this, uh, feel free to contact us if you need, uh, need one of these. Uh, it's a great little tool. Uh, they run about you know, $400 to $500. Uh, it's a trickle tender, which is specifically designed for engine uh, reflashing. We're gonna set it there, we'll get an extension cord. All right, so excuse the shaky camera, but we just want to show you where you access the OBD port. Um, we've already pulled the door off, and here's the flashlight. There's going to be a side panel right there, and that purple plug is going to be your OBD port. So all you have to do is uh, plug the cable in. Sorry how to do this. <laughs> um, that COP provides. I will show you in just a second. It goes right in. Uh, you have it plugged in there. Okay, next step is just going to put the key in the ignition and turn the uh, accessory power on. Go ahead and turn off uh, your radio. Uh, go ahead and turn off your fan speed as well. Also turn off your lights. Um, just try to conserve as much battery as possible. Um, the OBD cord that COP provides just has a little protector on it. You're just going to pull that off. Set that aside and then just plug in the access port and excuse me, this is gonna be shaky as I try to try to do this. Just gonna put that down for a quick the access port should get power. You'll see that it says access port. Customized it with our logo. Um, go ahead and hit OK. Uh, you can see we have 13.4 volts running, um, and that's from the the tender itself, so it's gonna it's gonna maintain that. Um, and then now it's just time to install. So uh, just this middle button's the OK button. Click OK. It's gonna say confirm. Yes, it's a 981 2.7. Continue. Then which map do we want to load? Um, let's go with the stage one. We run 93 octane. Um, so the stage one 93 octane. Click OK. Uh, just to remind you that the battery charger is uh, recommended. If you have a fresh battery, uh, you should be fine. Uh, we always recommend whenever you write to an ECU to use one of these. Um, your standard maintainer should be OK. Uh, however, if you're on an older battery, uh, you know, definitely recommend this. Shops will have these, so 
Um, save yourself a hassle. Don't You don't want to brick the ECU or have any issues there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. It's going to take you through this process. You'll see it right there. Obviously, do not turn off the vehicle or unplug anything. Uh, you'll get some error lights and stuff on the dash. Uh, ignore those. That's part of the flashing process. And just let this thing run through completion. It's going to take probably about 10 minutes or so to flash the ECU. Then it's going to ask you to turn the ignition key off and then wait about 10 to 15 seconds. And then you're just going to turn it back on and hit OK. Sorry, this probably isn't the most exciting thing to watch at this moment, but uh, let's just wait. Follow the instructions. Okay. Kicking it back on. I'm just going to hit continue. Just going to finish the process. And there you go. Installation successful. And then we're just going to go ahead and click it off. Uh, it says to wait at least 15 seconds before starting it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just disconnect the uh, battery uh, tender and then uh, go ahead and give it a start. Okay, so we disconnected and let's go ahead and start the car up. Uh, i got to take the light off, change the oil here this weekend. And there it goes. It's a cold start, so it's going to rev for a little high for a second there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just turn this off, but it's running. We'll take it for a spin. This graph shows the acceleration from 30 to 80 miles an hour with the Cayman. What we did is we put it in second gear and hit wide open throttle uh, right around 25 miles an hour so that we're, we're flat open at 30 miles an hour. And then essentially it's just a drag race up to 80 miles an hour. There's a short gear change from second to third gear called around 70 miles an hour. Um, but these were back to back. We basically had the same operating temperature because we let the car sit while we were doing the um, install of the cob. So these were back to back, same temperature, humidity, same stretch of road. Um, so you can't get more precise. This was recorded with the QSTARS 600S. Uh, it uses something like 32 satellites to give this information. Very, very accurate. Um, the 30 to 80 mile an hour pole, everything stock was 7.626 seconds. It actually took 648.17 feet to get um, from 30 to 80 miles an hour. Uh, we measured distance too because it kind of tells the story. Uh, with the Cobb, uh, stage one OTS map, uh, just loaded, no other modifications. Uh, it did in 7.007, um, so that's a difference of points, basically 0 0.62 um, second improvement, 30 to 80 miles an hour, which is pretty significant. Um, and it basically does it in about 65 feet shorter. Um, so certainly measurable, the, the result difference. Then we also here show the uh, breakdown from 30 to 40, 30 to 50, 30 to 60, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can see um, the difference in, in time and distance. Um, most of it was kind of more towards the top end um, of the acceleration. Uh, the Cobb allows you to go to 8,000 RPMs. Doesn't quite make as much power. We'll show you the dyno here in a second. Um, but most of the, the difference is really in that, uh, call it four to 7,000 RPM range where the Cobb tune is making uh, approximately about nine more wheel horsepower. Um, so let's pull up the dyno real quick. the dyno run we ran this back to back and a quick note uh, the car was strapped down to the dyno the entire time we basically just installed the cob while it was uh, strapped down to the dyno so nothing was manipulated um, we started right up into dyno poles uh, typically a tune is going to need a, a few uh, cycles or uh, you know probably about 15 minutes of runtime to really truly optimize and learn all the um, calibration and how it relates to the sensor so this might not quite be the most accurate picture uh, we think if we strapped it back down, it might make a few more horsepower. 
um, but we'll do that after we do some hardware upgrades and custom tuning. Uh, but just wanted to show you while we were at the dyno getting the baseline numbers, we decided to grab this real quick. Uh, the red line here is the baseline number with uh, basically 229 wheel horsepower. Um, the peak number is up about 3 horsepower, um, called about 3.3 horsepower um, peak with the Cobb access port OTS stage 1 map. Um, but you can see kind of in the middle of that power band probably around, um, and you'll see this is uh, through a speedometer, um, not RPM, um, but essentially it's probably right around 35 100 RPM up to about, uh, call it 6,800, uh, a really good um, valley in between those two uh, two lines. So those plots will show uh, a, P, a max number between the two of about nine wheel horsepower. So it made a difference about nine wheel horsepower, which is a really nice improvement on a 2.7 naturally aspirated motor um, and all other things stock. But you have that nice, I would call it uh, five to to nine wheel horsepower difference through most of the rev range and then just a little bit more up top. I will also note it was 95 degrees that day, so very hot. Uh, we did not have the data log running, so uh, we also think it could have been pulling some timing um, up top. It was running pretty rich just from the smell of the exhaust. Um, so we're looking forward to doing some custom tuning. We think with the hardware upgrades, we're gonna be able to get a lot more out with the tuning. Uh, but just wanted to show you guys what just the access port would do. Uh, hooked up to your 2.7 liter uh, Cayman or Boxster. And certainly there's a calibration for the 3.4 uh, Cayman S um, as well as the GT4 and the Spider. So um, those uh, also will probably do a little bit, obviously they're different calibrations, different engine, but um, probably similar. Uh, with that aspirated tunes, getting about 10 wheel horsepower without any uh, hardware modification is really good. I mean, Porsche obviously tunes these things in the factory pretty well, um, but it's great to see that you can just plug in a tune and get that much power from uh, just software. Now, um, it's not a turbo car where software is really going to make a huge difference, um, where you can just up the boost and get 50, 60, 70 more wheel horsepower, but um, we're pretty happy with the results. Uh, we're hoping for a little bit more on the peak number, but we think with the hardware that we're going to do, uh, coupled with the tuning is really going to do some good stuff. So when we go back to the dyno, we're going to get a dyno pull of the car with all the hardware without any tuning uh, with Cobb's Stage 2 OTS map and then we're also going to do our own custom map. So we'll be able to compare all three of those and show you what the difference with tuning makes with the hardware. And again, we're the next episodes that are going to come, we're going to install the AFE air filters, the IPD competition plenum with the GT3 82 millimeter throttle body, and then we're going to do agency power with 200 cell cat headers and then the sole performance uh, valve cat back. So that'll all come out pretty quick. We're excited to do all that. Uh, we finally have our, had our GPS uh, data logger in to get some accurate runs uh, and the dyno. So we, we really want to provide a lot of data to you guys to show you what these modifications do. Um, certainly we'll leave the uh, are they worth it? Um, is it a value decision up to you? Uh, it's really a personal call, but um, we're, we're happy so far with the results and we're looking forward to doing more. So stay tuned. Thanks.